Hello, everybody. Um, so today what I'm doing is I <clears throat> have been unpacking books and I'm getting ready to sell a lot of books. So I'm taking some time to clean them up and get them all nice and ready for stuff. And so um, they're a little, they're in a little better shape uh, than they are now. Um, I have um, a lot less space now and I have limited bookshelf space. So with that said, I would rather have a bookshelf full of stuff that I really super duper want um, than stuff that is just interesting to have, let's say. So um, in these videos you're going to be seeing, you're going to see books that I read and probably will never read again. Um, or you're seeing books that I picked up for some freaking reason and they're either duplicates or different covers or um, things like that that um, I'm just trying to whittle down what I have. And um, already um, the amount of dust is already getting to me. So we are going to try to fix this stuff up. So I got my my cleaning and repair apparati and um, everything else. And this is my painting table. So um, the table looks a bit grungy, but um, the majority of that is um, paint or ink or scratches or um, well, right here is red wine. So um, let's just get to it. So this book I've had for a really long time. Um, it is a book on the gun. Um, the Fighting Forces series. The story of the gun and the gorillas. Uh, Tells you all of these standard military books and manuals. Um, yeah. So. Warfare. Three dollars. Um, so yeah. So. What I'm going to do is just a. Quick. Little rub down. You guys have seen me do this before. feels better. That feels like it was a sticker at one point. Can I get that off with that? I might have to spray it. Man, this, the interior pages of this are a lot worse than the cover. So let's try to get in here. It's a very tight, very tight um, binding on this. And I got to be careful because some of these pages are quite old. Well, actually, all the pages are probably the same age. Um, but this is from 1943. Uh, some of the Corners of the pages have been cut or ripped or torn. This one here is just folded. Let me see if I could get... Nope, that just came right off. Okay, so I probably won't do that anymore. But yeah, that paper is very brown and aged. All right. 
So now we're just gonna take it and put it in a little baggie. And this guy, if I could get him in here, will be off to the races. So yeah, I'm gonna probably be selling these on eBay. Um, little eBay store action. So uh, I just um, made a new eBay account. Some of them I might put up on um, Etsy if I notice that some uh, genres do better on Etsy. Now this, the Terminal Man, I love this cover because it's one of those die cut mumbo jumbos. This looks like someone went around it with a pen. I don't think that's supposed to look like that. I don't know if you can see that. Is that is that a pen? Did someone go around it with a pen? Being cute and clever? I don't know. We will see. Or probably not. I just never really got into Crichton. Never, never a huge fan. Actually, do a little bit of that. Oof. Get some polish in here. Get some of these little smudgies off. If I could get it, that oh, one just doesn't want to come off. I'm sure it takes a bit of elbow grease. right into the dust. Yep, I don't know if this will fit into one of these bags. This is a, I'm sure it will, but some of the chunkier books do not. There we go. That is a fit. Ping. What was that? Oh, okay. Now these ones, this has been kind of a, a hard pill for me to swallow, getting rid of Star Trek books. And basically, I think the idea here is, is that, um, I just, Star Trek books, there's so many, and they're still coming out, and even though I'm only interested in the original series, cast and characters and stuff like that, um, a lot of it seems like a never-ending battle um, to collect everything and since I am a collector that's really difficult for me and I don't know if I'm going to try I don't think I'm going to try to get that um, price tag off Ugh. now if this was a book I was going to keep I would try to get the price tag off. But it's a little banged up. Cover's a bit torn. Um, and this is 1979. Yeah. These log books are so cool. And I think I do, I remember doing a video where I was like, I don't know what covers I like better, if I like these ones or the other ones. Um, and I'll show you the other ones here in a minute. 
Uh, but yeah. <sighs> so it's just one of those things, and maybe I'll regret it someday down the line. Um, but as of right now, I'm okay with it, especially since I didn't have a complete set of, oh, this one looks a lot better. This is nice. This is log 10. But yeah, these are um, adapted from the animated series and all of these, oh, that is just some nasty stuff right there. I could probably get that off. Let me try to get that off. Should probably let that sit on there. It's just got some sticky. I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, <clears throat> yeah, so Alan Dean Foster made some books based off of the animated shows. And uh, it's kind of cool. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, and this one, first edition, 1978. Uh, I don't know. I'm already second guessing this. Maybe I'll hang on to these. I would just like to get a complete set of the kind I like, which I think is these ones. I, I do like this, like, computer deck kind of thing. Uh, and here's log three. Wow, 69 cents. Pages in here got a little messed up, and I'm afraid to unmess them up because last time I tried to unmess up a page, it came off in my hand. But let's see if I can fix these guys. Nope, come on. There we go. That looks a little bit better. If I can unfold these, when I get them in the bag, they should stay put. Come on. Oh my god, this one does not want to move. Well, here I am with my big stupid hands trying to do something. Okay, let me see. Yep, those are all good in there now. I really like just those Fucking big, bright, primary colors of the ship. It's very nice. <sighs> but yeah, I'm already regretting this. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh yeah, that looks good. Yep, that looks pretty, pretty good. Ping. Um, now here is the, I think this is the original cover art for these things. Oh, and a piece of the cover just came off right there. Huh. Do I glue that back on? What should I do? I can't even pick that up. Um, yeah, so first time in print. So this has to be the 74 edition, I would assume. 75, first printing. And this has the 
Terratin incident, time trapping, more tribbles, more tribbles. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so this is log four. Yeah, if you're into first run Star Trek books, here you go. Yeah, the pages look okay. Nothing really. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Oh, wow. That really cleans up. Let's see if I can get that a little bit better. Yeah, and um, I'm pretty sure that is a still from the animated show. Can you see that? You want me to get closer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these ones are cool because they are the first prints, but I don't like them as much. <laughs> uh, me. Who is this guy? Yeah, so that looks way better. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and now we got more. Michael Effin Crichton. This one's called The Naked Dude. A huge bestseller, now a great movie! Um, Arthur Hill, David Wayne, James Olson, and Kate Reed. Wow. If four names ever sound like made-up names before, that would be it. Over two million copies sold. Oh, it looks like an eyeball. You see that? I never noticed that before. That's amazing. Okay, let's... Oh, yeah, this book's in really good shape. When is this? This has to be what? Uh... Oh, crap, nineteen seventy. No way. This is a 1971 edition? Really? Kind of looks like it with this thing, but everything else... Huh. Lots in really good shape. I don't think anyone ever read it. Maybe they just went and saw the movie. And then put this on the shelf. Huh. Dun dun! That looks really snazzy. That is a just a really clean looking book right there. All right, now this one. This was a stripped issue of um, Log Five, which kind of sucks that it's stripped. I don't know what I could actually do with this now. To save Mister Spock. If we don't have that strobel in in 24 hours, he'll die, McCoy stated flatly. Oh, that wasn't very flatly. I should have done that better. Um, yeah, this is 75. Damn stripped fucking books. Yeah, I don't know what I'll do with this. Can't really clean the paper. But I gotta clean up this stuff. And I got this in a lot on eBay, actually. Um, all of the logbooks with this one without a cover. Now, I'm hoping that it was just a stripped book and that Karen Emery didn't just destroy this book just to be a jerk. 
Um, and then we have TikTok by John Slatic. And um, this cover's a lot of fun. Um, this was winner of the 1984 British Science Fiction Award. Um, but yeah, that cover is all sorts of fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. The problem with this, I got this copy and it starts on page 25. So this too is a book I probably can't do anything with other than keep it for the artwork. I don't know, maybe there are people on eBay that take broken down books for some reason. <sighs> the things you learn Yeah, I remember some of the pages were missing, and I was like, opened it up to see like what year it came out, and I was guessing it was '84, but I assumed that this would be a um, different uh, printing of it. But a robot shall not injure a human being, or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Asimov's first law of robotics. Well, TikTok's got a gun and he looks pissed. Or maybe that's just how he always looks. I can't tell. But, um, yeah. So, this one I never read because it was missing the first 25 effing pages. So, yeah. Oh, that's pretty... I don't like that. Well, I, don't know, I probably won't do anything with this, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So now we have a Star Trek novel, Ishmael. Oh. Painted covers, man. Look at that. Just look at it. That is fucking gorgeous. Uh, let's see. Where are you from? Sarah asked. <laughs> you see what she did there? Um, 1985. Oh, of course that's a Boris Vallejo cover. Because it's effing amazing. Price three fifty. Ooh, this is so hard, guys. I really don't want to be doing this. Did another piece of cover come off, or that was from the other book? Okay. Yeah, I really don't want to be doing this. This is kind of breaking my heart a little bit. Oh God. Maybe I won't do it. Fuck. Oh, that is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Ah. And it is in my wheelhouse. Ugh. I don't know. Maybe if I had like a list of... See, the other thing is, is that oh, it's raised lettering. Oh, my God. Oh, yes, look at that. Um, the other thing is, I have all the Star Trek books in ebook. So, um, well, like all of them up until about like, uh, let's say, like three years ago. So, I mean, all the ones that I would want, I have at least in that form. So, what do you do then? Like, do you just say, fuck it, I need the shelf space and go to town? <sighs> I 
Let's see here. Boop. Yeah, so there is a little tear there and up there. Don't look too hot. That looks good. The pages are amazing. The pages look great. Fucking hell, dude. Boris Vallejo, dude. And it's so weird because, like, one of the staples of the original series is that they always would go to, like, places that looked like Earth from the past or these weird, like, alternate um, Earth-type deals. Oh, I don't like that. What the fuck is that? But the only reason why they did that was because they were on the back lot and there were all of these like sets built that they could use. So they were just writing stuff based on what sets they had and shit. And so you end up, even though that was like one of the things about Star Trek that I always thought was kind of hokey. I'm like, oh, come on. And a lot of people loved it. Um, I would rather them just be on the ship and shoot other ships or whatever. But because that was such a staple, you end up having a lot of the fiction or fanfic or whatever you want to call it, pastiche. Um, oh, that feels so good. Um, where they would do stuff like this. And um, I don't know. It's just, what's a good way to describe it? Like, where you do something, <laughs> I don't know, like, uh, like, it's almost like, okay, this is probably a horrible example, but it's probably like, um, you know, in Billy Madison, was it Billy Madison? Yeah, I, I'm um, trying to use um, Adam Sandler as an analogy for science fiction. Okay, it's kind of like when um, in Billy Madison, that kid peed his pants and he was all worried that people were going to go, oh, he peed his pants. So then Billy Madison threw a bunch of water on his pants and he's like, hey, look, all the cool kids are peeing their pants. So then all the kids on the bus pee their pants. Um, so that kid wouldn't feel bad. Like that's that's what I that's what that reminds me of. Um, probably not my best work in analogy circles. Well, I'm exhausted. Um, I'm gonna do some more at a later date. And um, once I get <clears throat> my eBay shop and stuff like that up, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Um, and if you're interested in any of these, that's where they'll be.